And I said, this is going to be huge. Sports cards from an investing standpoint is going to be huge. This is going to be the next big thing. It's Independence Day in America, a day to get the barbecue going. Enjoy the freedom we all have as Americans. Maybe sing Kumbaya with our neighbors. Come together as a nation. Maybe light off some fireworks, watch some baseball, and enjoy the summer traditions in the United States. Ah, who am I kidding? This is another great day to roast and troll the stupid sports card community because on today's program, we will answer the question that is on everybody's mind. No, not what HGA will announce tomorrow. The question on everybody's mind in the hobby is when will sports cards stop going down in value? Yep. We are halfway through the year, folks, and sports cards continue to be on a two and a half year decline. Yep. The hobby positivity police will say all investments are down and that, folks, is fundamentally not true. Please tell me. You invest in something other than sports cards because Bitcoin is up 86% year to date. The S&P 500 is up 16% year to date. The NASDAQ is up 31%. The Dow Jones is up 3.84%. If you invested in dividend paying stocks, your gains could be even higher. When was the last time your Luka Doncic card paid you a dividend to hold it, for example? But sports cards continue to be on a downward slide with no end in sight. Yep. Year to date, baseball's down 10%, hockey down 12%, soccer down 27%, football down 30%, and basketball down in an astonishing 34%. The only outlier in these indexes is wrestling, which is up 13% year to date. There's a very good community of wrestling card social media accounts. And I think do a good job covering that side of the hobby. Combine that with the lower print runs compared to the other major sports. And it should be no surprise that wrestling cards have done well this year. For example, this 2023 Prism WWE, one of one of The Rock, PSA 9 sold for 16800 the other night. Earlier this year, we saw the 2022 version of that card break records and sell for $126,000. And in that show, I told the viewers to buy Teddy Bridgewater. But seemingly everything but wrestling has declined for the last two and a half years. That is still the biggest story in the sports card world. Many in this hobby want to run from it. They don't want to talk about it. They don't frankly want me to talk about it. But cards have steadily gone down since February 2021. And unlike other investments, they haven't started to bounce back. So buy Mason Rudolph. Even the Card Ladder 50 index made up of 50 cards that frankly... 90 to 95% of the hobby will never own. It's down 0.2% over six months and down about 9% over the last 12 months. Only eight cards in the card ladder 50 are priced under $1,000. So even cards that are seen as investments haven't been able to bounce back quite yet. Now, Stidham cards have been hot. They have been hot for the last three months. And you can see from this chart that they have been going up and up and up since March. During the COVID sports card boom, you had the likes of Jeff Wilson and countless imitators of his pumping and pushing modern sports cards as investments. Those same influencers say how much they care about the hobby, but the damage done by the COVID pumpers and influencers will be felt for years. If you thought year one of sports card investor was good, you haven't seen anything coming yet. During the COVID boom, these pumpers and influencers never held anyone accountable in this industry. Shady breakers were given platforms. Card trimmers were seemingly forgiven for their past sins. The hobby positivity crowd even pumped fractional marketplaces. Shady people and shady businesses were not only put in the spotlight, they were put on a pedestal. If you go on a starstock.com and sign up and enter referral code SCI, Panini, Tops, and the grading companies were treated like royalty by hobby newbies during the COVID card boom. Anyone with any experience in the hobby couldn't help but laugh and shake their head. Think about all the money and cards being held by Starstock's six-month shipping backlog. Think about all the money wasted on Luca, Trey, Ja, and Zion cards let alone the money wasted on players with half the talent of those guys. I think that Will Greer right now is about four times better of an investment than Kyler Murray. The industry did a horrible job policing and checking itself during the COVID boom. And the damage done from that will be felt for years. We are two and a half years into feeling that damage. And there is really no end in sight. We've seen companies like Starstock, Dibs, and PWCC all scramble for the exits or be sold for scraps. 
Meanwhile, these influencers who were sponsored by these companies, sponsored by the likes of Starstocks, Dibs, and PWCC, still want to stand behind a podium and preach positivity. As you know, with me, it's, uh, it's all about the vibes. Even cards of all-time greats are plummeting in value. This Tom Brady card sold three different times since December. It's gone from 690000 to 396000 in six short months. Eventually, all the QBs you guys invested in during the last few years will have a similar drop in price once the hype runs out. One of the guys I was looking around for was Luca. Hobby golden boy Mike Trout is maybe hurt again. Hopefully he's okay, but nobody's performance and card prices have fallen off in the last few years more than Mike Trout. Before Otani came around for years, since about 2013, I've been hearing how Mike Trout is the safest bet in the hobby, better than Mickey Mantle, they said. Well, ever since Vegas Dave stopped investing in him, his cards have tanked. This gold refractor sold for 132000 in May of last year, and now this card recently sold for $68,000. Look at this Mike Trout card. It sold for 10800 the other night. Well, what if you zoom out five years? You'd think you'd be up huge on this card, right? No. In June of 2018, this card was worth $10,600. Your $200 gain in five years probably wouldn't pay for the fees to sell this card. New two-year low price on this LeBron the other night. This card used to be worth $70,000 at one point. Zoom out, the 2018 price on this was around $3,000, by the way. Will the price continue to slide downward? We will see. Someone with one one-hundredth the talent as LeBron. This Trey Young card sold for $9,600 the other night. Someone paid $18,000 for one in February in four months. This card has lost $9,000 in value. Yeah. Cards that have done really well and held up in value to some extent are rare, amazing-looking cards. $15,000 for a Steph Curry autograph. He's still around. They're still making cards of him. It's a real strong price and speaks to his popularity. Anything Michael Jordan can have huge value. An exquisite base card serial number to 225 from LeBron's rookie season 0304 sold for $8,800. Will we see base cards of key players from something like Flawless or National Treasures sell for this much 20 years after they come out? We shall see. Anything Erling Holland can have value $7,800 for a Panini Select Gold. Signed patch card, serial number two of 10, seems like a strong price. People love this guy. But we end the show with a 1997-98 Skybox Clear Metal Universe. Precious Metal Gems of Derek Fisher, PSA 5, sold for $3,300. If you know who Ja, Zion, Luca, and Trey are, but you do not know who Derek Fisher is, please don't ever, and I mean this, please don't ever, Leave a comment on one of my videos trying to tell me about the NBA. I've got some basketball and baseball to watch today on July 4th. Hopefully you got something going on and we will see you soon right here on Sports Guard Radio. PPP loans fraudulently.